Welcome to Weird TV. We've got a great show lined up tonight. We're going to have a lot of fun tonight. I think that you'll really enjoy it. I don't know if I just repeated myself, but I'm going to keep talking anyway. So, uh, so Mike. So, Bill. So, yesterday, something went wrong with the plumbing after I flushed the toilet, and it flooded it and caused the water from the upstairs toilet to go dripping down to the kitchen. Bummer. Yeah, and my sister's like, what did you do? I'm like, I flushed the toilet. She's like, why? I'm like, okay, next time I won't flush the toilet. No, better yet, next time I'll just like go in the litter box. Uh, so, so did you flush the toilet next time? I, uh, yes. Well, you lied. I did. You lied to your sister? I always lied to my and, sister. And uh, how can we trust you? Well, you're not my sister, are you? Yeah, I think we're all your sister oh. in a way. You know, we all have a piece of that inside of us, piece wanting of to be Mike's sister and wanting to yell at you for flushing toilets, mistakes that you make in your life, because sometimes you just make us so angry I that know. we need to let you know how we feel. And it's important to let people know how you feel. Don't you agree? Yeah. So, you... I mean, uh, I'll never flush time, the toilet again. Next I'll time, think twice. Don't flush the toilet. I think, think that's twice. the message here. We have a very exciting guest uh, that I think you'll all know very well from television and beyond television in the world. And uh, I'm personally very excited to have him on today. Uh, someone I looked up to as a television personality. And um, I'm, sh I'm assured that you'll all know exactly what I'm talking about when I say that uh, if you want to get fast cash and highest prices paid, this is the guy you're going you're gonna to want to know. So, without any further delay, tonight's guest, Fast Eddie. Canned applause. This is, there's applause. It's, I'm going to add applause in later. <laughs> nice to see you tonight. How you doing, sir? Good, good, good. Good, thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm so glad you could make it out. Orange, I mean. That you was how long? Quite a quite a orange. quite a drive. You come up all the way from your about an hour in Orange, about an hour. So that was, that was fast. So for those who don't know, the very few percentage of people out there who don't know uh, what you do, why don't you just start off by telling us what it is? What do what do we do? What do you do? Uh, we pay the most. <laughs> That's what we do. <laughs> we pay the most for your old broken gold and jewelry. That's pretty much what we do. We buy from the public and we sell it to a refinery. So we are just the, uh, just the middleman between the refinery and the public. What, um, where are your, your, your physical location? Is it a mail order? Or? We have a one in uh, Don Mail ever. <laughs> uh, we can go get into that later, I guess. Uh, we have uh, lo the first location, which is in West Hartford, mm -hmm. 7 Sedgwick Road. Uh, the other one is, uh, second location is in Orange, Connecticut. 559 Boston Post Road. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, so you're the middleman. What was your what was your inspiration to get into this line of work? What was the first? Wait, go back, go back in time, get into your time machine and push the dial for when I started this business. And uh, what, where were you? What, what were you thinking? And <clears throat> what made you decide to do it? Well, I've been in the jewelry industry for about 18 years already. Mm -hmm. And uh, when retail went pretty much sour, retail re started really going bad due to the economy. Uh, when instead of people buying jewelry, they started selling it. Mm -hmm. So instead of going out of business, we have to switch. Mm -hmm. I have to yeah. switch and I, I had a store from in Hartford for uh, about 10 years. And um, that's when I decided to start the uh, Fast Eddie. Mm -hmm. That's when Fast Eddie was born. Correct. In uh, May of 2007. Very interesting. That's not, not so long ago, but... Not too long ago. It's reached, it's grown into something since then. It's grown into a new uh, idea. Um, I think many people will know you for your TV commercials. Uh, I think. The, especially people who happen to be watching TV right now, 
will identify with that. And when was your first? When did you first decide to put a, put out a commercial to advertise your business? From the from the first day we opened. The first day. Yes, uh, my partner and I, uh, Keith, and I, we uh, we decided that we uh, to be to be able to reach people, you have to advertise. Mm -hmm. And so from the day from the get go, we started with a heavy advertising. Mm -hmm. And did, did it work? Look where we are. Well. Well, no question. Of yes. course, it worked. What was the very first commercial? What was the the very first commercial one? was uh, the Three Amigos. The Three Amigos. You know, I think I remember that one. Yeah. yeah. Way back in two thousand seven. Yes. The Three Amigos. So you're a fan of Steve Martin? Yes. Big fan. <laughs> right? Who comes into your store the most? What kind of person? Uh, Middle-aged women. Middle-aged women. Well, yes. People who have jewelry. Correct. Especially women that have a lot of jewelry and they, they lose a lot of earrings. So we buy a lot, we'll lots of single earrings. Huh? Single. Oh, well, that makes sense. sense. What are you going to do with one earring? Except, right. except where it be some, some guy who just wears one earring or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so, having I, been in this fight. I have a question. Yes. You're, you're fast, Eddie. Uh, what, what made you bring up the fast? Like, what was just like Eddie's? Uh, Why not? A few of my friends called me fast, Eddie, because yes. I, I, I run pretty fast. Oh. And um, so my, my nickname is Eddie, and, and so they called me fast, Eddie. And when we decided to open the store, I said, hey, well, let's, let's, let's just go with a catchy name. And, yeah. and, and, and why not use something really catchy, which is fast, Eddie. I mean, it is really I mean, catchy. It is catchy, and for some people, it may sound like, I don't know. I don't. I don't. I don't think I want to go see this guy because he may pull a fast one on me. But on the other hand, it, it gets people uh, curious. It does. You know, what? I'm going to go fast. see this guy. See how fast he is. Uh, I'm going to go really uh, see how how honest he is. And and we prove them wrong all the time. I'll put you on the spot for a minute here. Mm -hmm. What do you think of your? Some would say arch nemesis, good old Tom. He's just another businessman, that's just all. another businessman. Mm -hmm. Do you, have you met him? Yes, yeah. yeah. When, uh, when did you meet him? Oh, before I opened the first the story. Yeah. Yeah. Was, um, was it through just being in the jewelry business? Yes, yes. Yeah. Has he followed, is he a similar, coming from a similar place that you are, that he was in one side of the business and got into another? No, I believe he's always been in, you know, the He's always business. been in yeah. the yeah. So what is your opinion? Is humanity motivated by greed and jealousy or by love? I think a combination of both. It's both. Explain. Well, I mean, everybody loves somebody. Mm -hmm. Everyone loves somebody. Right. I don't, I don't, I don't know the first uh, human being that can say that I don't love anybody. And, um, you can love somebody and and say I don't I don't have I'm not ambitious or I'm not that I don't want to accumulate wealth mm -hmm. and but you will do whatever you will have you need to do to please the person that you love. Interesting, interesting take on that. Um, or to provide a better future for that person that you love. Is it? Um, which you think is more? Which is the more the motivation? Uh, the negative or the, the, the loving aspect to humanity? Which is, which is more important? What's the negative way? What's the negative side to you? Uh, negative side is... Uh, greed? Greed, wanting to harm others to get ahead, you know, to be self-interested, you know, just, just care about me or to care about others. Which, which is the most important, do you think? Uh, these days, it's, it's tough to say. That's true. So how about the Federal Reserve? Can we trust them? Oh, I don't want to get there. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here first. Can't trust them. Can't trust the Federal Reserve. <laughs> Abolish the Federal Reserve, Ron Paul 2012. Um, here's my next question. Is the Federal Reserve a form of modern day slavery? That's a question for the viewers by the way. We'll never know, is the follow-up. 
So here's my next question. <laughs> what is the best form of government? Totalitarian socialism or anarcho-capitalism? That's the follow-up to the greed, greed, love question. <laughs> you have an opinion? Nope. No opinion. Nope. Mike? Yep. Which one do you prefer? I sure do. Both of them? Yeah. He wants both. <laughs> you're familiar with, uh, you're in the exchange, let's say gold is a commodity, uh, dollars are a commodity. Uh, it's not technically a commodity, I guess. I'm not, I'm not an economist, but so let's not go there. But let's say they both have a market and they're traded. What do you, have you heard of this new digital currency, Bitcoins? I heard of it, yeah. Have you heard of it? Yeah. Do you, what do you think about it? Uh, I haven't, I haven't read much into it, so I don't, I really don't, don't know what it's about anyway. Do you I, think I, 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 I heard a little bit, and, but I'm not, not enough. Do you think it's, do you think we can opinion. trust it? Do you think it should be, we should be suspicious of Bitcoins? Didn't that came from a, from a show called The Big Wife? I mean, The Good Wife. That was Bitcoins. It's a real thing. Yeah, is it? Is you it can a real go thing? Check that. If you if you look Bitcoins up on Wikipedia, you'll you'll find a page for it. It's a digital only encrypted currency um, favored by the anarcho capitalists of the internet. Well, good luck with that. Uh, would you ever sell gold for Bitcoins? Heck no. Well, there you have it. There's something about holding on to a dollar. With your yeah, hands. You need to have, I don't know. I don't trust it, and neither should you. Moving on. So, we all know you're fast, right? You're fast, Eddie. I run fast. Yes. You're, you're the fastest in the biz, as they say. Uh, cl clearly much faster than good old Tom, anyway. I don't think... I mean, he's old. He's, he's not fast. We can all agree. Um, but... We'd like to find out just how fast is Fast Eddie, if we can. We're going to have a lightning round, and I'm going to show you some items, and you're going to have to tell me whether, whether or not I can get fast cash for them, and, and as quickly as you possibly can. It's, it'll be like uh, Jeopardy. So are you ready? I'm ready. All right. First item, an old watch. Ooh, that's bling. And some bling, we bling. Yeah. Fast cash yeah. or no fast cash? Nope. No fast cash. Oh, okay. <laughs> Three seconds. Now, <laughs> I don't have any actual real gold. You'll have to pretend that these items are made of gold. Come on. <laughs> oh, you know, here I'm on public access TV right now. You know, I'm not. If this is an NBC 30 or whatever, Oof. you know, they they might have real gold items on set, but we don't. Um, bowling trophy. Fast cash or no fast cash? Maybe if this was, this was gold. How much? If this is solid gold? 24 uh, karat. 24 karat gold. This is 24 karat. Imagine. Use your imagination. Imagination. Maybe round it up to uh, $7,000, dollars $8,000. $8,000. Phone link trophy. All right. <laughs> moving on. <laughs> Antique coins. Okay. You have... Uh, that's, those are one ounce coins. Those are half ounce coins. And these all look like... Uh, one tenth of an ounce. Yes. Okay. Of gold coin. So, so how much? Do the math. At seventeen hundred dollars, roughly seventeen hundred dollars an ounce. And how many ounces do we have here? About two, three, uh, about four ounces. Wow. That was exceptional. That's a lot of. That'd be a lot of fast cash. Yeah. About five thousand one hundred, roughly. All right. Pokemon gold. Oh, that's. <laughs> That's your department, buddy. Oh, it is. What, uh, fast cash or no fast cash? No fast cash. No, no fast, fast cash. cash. How, about, how about you, Mike? $5. $5. Mm -hmm. You pay $5 for this? No. Right. You don't play Pokemon anymore? I do, but not, not that one. <laughs> not All right, here's a, a $2 bill. A $2 bill. This $2 bill is worth exactly $2. $2. Yeah. You heard it here first. Fast cash. Let's see. Some perfectly good string. No cash. No cash. No cash. Oh. Some ruined sneakers that I found hanging from a telephone. Oh, take those things. Ooh. Fast cash or no, no fast cash? No, no cash. cash. No cash. No cash. And a ball of human hair and teeth. No cash. No cash? Mike, you give me cash for this? Yeah. How much? Two, two bucks. The two bucks he had there. Two fifteen. You do two fifteen? You drive a hard bargain. Two dollars and fifteen cents. 
human hair and teeth. Three dollars. Three dollars. Two two seventy three. I have a family to feed. Two dollars and sixty three cents. Fine. Two dollars and sixty three cents. Fast cash. You heard it here first. Um. I think that's all the. I think you've proven clearly how fast you really are. Actually, I'm I'm surprised and impressed. Um. And um. So I have one last question. Will our people be crucified on a cross of gold? Thank you very much. <laughs> I think that's, that's great. Thank you so much for coming out tonight. Um, Thank you for having me. And now a word from our commercials. I'm looking at you, Terrence. Barbara, I'm home from my job at the pizza factory. What's for dinner? It's not dinner time. You're home six hours early. Spaghetti again? <laughs> sure, Ray. Just give me a minute to open the can, per usual. I marry you for your beautiful looks and your ability to open cans. My beautiful wife, I brought you some flowers. Ray, you're not telling me something. Did you forget my birthday again? <laughs> What's the matter, Raymond? Didn't you tell your wife you lost your job for punching your boss in the face? No, I didn't. But it's okay. I can bring my broken gold to Fast Steady for fast cash and the highest prices paid. Venezuela reporting live for Channel 4. I'm here with the self-proclaimed world's most comfortable man. Tell me, sir, what's going through your mind right now? Well, uh, in these hot economic times, I decided that I should make myself as comfortable as possible. Uh, these big corporations and everything, they're getting themselves pretty nice and cozy, so I figured why not make myself a little something? This thing enables me to be mobile, be active, go about my day and do things, but I'm also extremely comfortable. That's the secret. I can just say honestly, I'm happier than I've ever been. I've never been happier than I am right now. I'm just so happy. So, without further ado, I'm going to show you guys just how to stay comfortable during the hard economic times. Oopsie daisy! I could just lay here for as long as it takes to recharge my batteries. Then, when it's time to get up, it's easy as one, two, three. I'm a miserable piece of shit. Look at me. Hard economic times. It's hard economic timing. Hard economic times. Hard economic times. Here, here we go. I got a mattress taped on my back. Let's get started with some advanced moves. Here's a scenario. There's a nuclear terrorist at the top of the building, and you've got to disarm him.
number one. We are going to act as if we are acquiescing to his ludicrous terrorist demands. This is a psychological technique. Remember, martial arts is about mind and body. Now watch closely. Yes, Mr. President. Oh, the bucket of gold and helicopter that he asked for will be on the roof in five minutes? I will tell him. Thank you, Mr. President. Clearly, the President would never deal with a terrorist scumbag like this. In martial arts, you gotta think fast. For the past cast and the highest prices paid, you're watching weird, really weird TV. <laughs>